and welcome back to yet another Buffalo Bills pregame, our first ever AFC Championship edition. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I'm Randy. Joining me today is Jared, Sean, and Dan here talking about Buffalo Bills pregame, and the Bills have beat the Ravens onto the Chiefs. Uh, Dan, what did you see in the Ravens game that you liked? What, what did you see? I think, you know, the defense obviously played great. Lamar did not get anything going whatsoever, obviously, and then he got injured um, at the end of the third quarter. So it was a weird game for both teams just because of the fact it was so windy, and I feel like that factored into it. Well, obviously, a lot of missed field goals. Yeah, I go off what Dan said. Um, our defense played freaking amazing, and uh, just watching Taron Johnson – on uh, Colin Coward uh, today talk about, you know, what their game plan was and just the hype video the Bills put out with Nick Wright uh, about a couple hours ago, um, just talking about how they were just going to stop them, you know, stop the run. And they've been gashed all year on that, and obviously with the Chiefs too. But, um, you know, stopping a run like that is absolutely incredible from where they've come from. Just they've, they've been playing amazing lately. All right. Two hot teams coming in the AFC Championship. Uh, Jared, any thoughts about the matchup against the Chiefs? Um, well, I watched the Browns-Chiefs uh, matchup, and, and basically what I learned from that was that this Chiefs team is not nearly as good as I thought they were. And I know, oh, my God, that's horrible. Like, how could you say that? But – in reality, the Browns were one touchdown away from beating the Chiefs. Like, they had that late fumble out of the end zone, which resulted in the touchback. And honestly, I think that's the first time I've ever thought that rule was crap. Um, I used to respect that rule. Now, I think I've changed my mind. Um, and, yeah, they would have scored a touchdown there. It's it's a home game again for the Bills. So, um, that's my kind of my thoughts there, is that this Chiefs team might not be as strong as we thought they actually were. Um, the top story of the week, of course, is going to be the injury that might have been the reason that Cleveland was in so late in the game. Um, I'm going to ask everybody, but we'll start with you, Jared. Uh, where do you think this goes with the Mahomes concussion? Yeah, so, yeah, like he got hit basically in the back left shoulder. Like He had, I think, more of like a nerve injury than a – concussion more or less I mean Andy Reid's already come out saying that oh he's doing great and he's already answered all his questions and he's already tweeting not no I don't really think tweeting has anything to do with whether or not you have a concussion but honestly I think he's going to be ready for the game I can't imagine him not playing in this game like it would have to be really really bad and I don't see that happening um but if Henny plays to be honest with you like I think he showed in that Browns game that he still has a little bit. I know he hasn't, but he's not a starter in this league, but I think he has just enough to be able to push the Chiefs through. He's no Barkley for sure. Uh, Dan, do you think there's any way that Mahomes doesn't end up in this game? Uh, no, I don't think there's any way he doesn't play personally. I mean, it's kind of funny that you said that, Jared, because right when I saw him tweet, I think he I saw, I can't remember what he tweeted, but. Uh, it was about Chad Henney. Um, Anything is possible or something like that. Yeah, no, no, that's what, that's what it is. Um, once I saw him tweet that, I'm like, okay, he's playing. And personally, as a Bills fan, I mean, I would almost be disappointed if he wasn't playing. I'm okay with either, but I, I think I would rather beat them with Mahomes. And I think there's just no way he's not going to play. I wouldn't count on that. I just want to quickly say before you move on, I am fine if Patrick Mahomes doesn't play. Uh, Sean, save you for last because you probably have the most professional opinion on this subject. Um, what circumstances would hold Mahomes out, I guess, is the question I want to ask. All right. So to, to go off why he had concussion issues um, and, you know, or symptoms is, you know, they said that it was poss possibly a vascular structure. Um, a lot of those nerves, you know, feed in through there. And so if you, you pinch any of those, you're going to get that type of response. So that's why you're thinking a concussion. Concussion is obviously just the brain. Um, and so if it's, a, if it's a neck thing, that's obviously not a concussion. That's why he cleared protocol so fast. So I don't think he's going to have any problems there. You'll see him practice in, in full. 
on uh, Wednesday. The one thing that will come into play there is obviously his toe too. Um, he's been having some problems with that. He was limping around. So hopefully that'll make him a little bit less mobile. Yeah, I don't see a way that the Chiefs don't find – like as an organization, don't find a way to get him on the field. Um, but one thing I think we can count on, if Belichick putting 20 people on the injury list the week we face them as any indication, is that Andy Reid's going to try to keep the question mark in the air for as long as possible as to who's going to be starting. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's not a game-time decision. Um, Cleveland, facing the Chiefs last week, passed very heavily in the first half with very little success, um, but started to run in more um, – run the ball, mix in running the ball more often as they did better in the second half. Uh, Dan, do you think that the Bills will continue on the pass heavy or do you think they'll follow the formula that worked for Cleveland and try to run the ball more often? You know, it's pretty crazy how much the Bills thing this year. Uh, there's a stat where it's highest pass to run ratio um, for the season and the Bills had the top three. The game against Seattle, that was the number one game where the the game through the ball the whole game and you know it has worked for the bills clearly during the regular season and throughout the postseason as well um but you know it's getting later into the postseason the bills much success throwing the ball um against the ravens so i think they're definitely gonna have to mix in the run i think they're gonna have to spread the ball as well you know hopefully gabe davis can have a big game Kobe. i think everyone's gonna have to get involved and um you know, just do whatever you can. I mean, mix the ball in as well, some screens, um, because the Bills definitely, you know, the offense didn't look spectacular. They didn't look how it looked all season against the Ravens. I mean, it was kind of like in 2018, 2019 times, just not playing great, but getting the job done. I mean, and that's the most important part. Um, looking at the other side of the ball, uh, the Bills, last time they faced the Chiefs, they kind of baited the Chiefs into running against them uh, to much success on the Chiefs' end. The 249 yards uh, on the ground against the Bills last time around. Sean, do you think this will be the plan of attack again, or um, do you think the Chiefs will try to change up their plan against our defense? So Taron Johnson said uh, today, actually, on Colin Carter, Colin, Colin Coward show um, that they the whole like season before that they weren't running the ball as much so they kind of surprised the Bills on that I think with a whole season of watching film on the Kansas City Chiefs the Bills have a pretty good idea of what they can do and how to defend it I mean I'm sure Sean McDermott and Leslie Fager have a great idea of what to do since they've done that the last I mean eight nine games where they've dominated really um, as far as controlling their team. So I don't think that they're going to run like that, honestly. And it was a short week for us. So we have a little bit longer week now than I'm going to a day on them. Right. And then we also, you know, we, we don't have to deal with not having Milano and Milano is super key for them having him. I mean, I think they're like 15 and zero. Obviously, the passing offense with Patrick Mahomes is a feared unit in all of uh, football. Jared, what do we have to do to stop the passing offense of the Chiefs? We have to make it so that the wide receivers are as uncomfortable as we can possibly make them. We have to get in their head, make sure that every time they catch the ball, they're being punished for it. And that's what we need to do to the Chiefs. We have to come out and just hit them as hard as we can because, let's face it, they're going to complete passes. They're going to pull it off. We're not going to stop them completely. So we have to just make it so that they're looking over their shoulders a little bit each time they catch the ball. And the other thing is, and I was sort of referencing back uh, to the first question you asked me, Randy, is that one thing I noticed from the Browns-Chiefs game is that the Chiefs tackle. Like, they don't allow – like, they hit their player, they tackle them for the most part, especially like when they're – like they're their corners and their safeties do. We let way too many tackles go through. And if, if we can tackle them, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Like on the first hit, boom, first hit, tackle down. I'm going to go off script. Remember, uh, uh, Tremaine Edmonds was injured in that game. He had, still had a shoulder injury. So not having Milano and, and having Tremaine Edmonds injured. Randy. And that was before A.J. Klein 
came out of the cocoon, a fully developed, beautiful linebacker butterfly. Um, I'm going to go off script real quick. It would be remiss if we didn't mention at least uh, that Dayball, it would seem, is going to be staying here in Buffalo for another season. All the vacancies that are not Philadelphia have been filled, and he said he doesn't want to go to Philly. Uh, so if someone wants to jump in, uh, any positive effect of Dable, like everyone knowing that he's on the team for the next year at least? Great. <laughs> I think, I mean, he knows he's got a good thing going, so he doesn't want to leave, and it's, it's definitely relieving for Bills fans. Obviously, you know, we're getting pieces that we did this year for next year, and just we're only getting better. And it's going to be weird looking at it, you know, as a Bills fan's perspective, because, you know, we thought this year, okay, we, we should win the division, but we weren't sure with New England still, obviously Miami looking a lot better. And then next year, it's, it's going to be more like, okay, we're winning. Like, there should be no questions asked. We should win the division next year. Yeah, I totally agree with Dave, about Dable. Dable's, you know, obviously Joss needs to grow again and get more chemistry with him, and hopefully, I can get him maybe one or two more weapons. But you know, having continuity there, I mean, can only make you better. I mean, I think Dable is a, a really good job at attacking areas that you don't normally think about attacking. He 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 uses his personnel really well for the most part. He has make some times he's in, not done as well, like the Colts game being one of them. But, you know, I think that they're a good defense too. But so, you know, I, I think Dave all is staying is a great thing and uh, good for the Bills. All right. Well, keys to the game. Jared, we'll start with you. What do the Bills have to do to win? This is going to shock everybody because it shocked me. The key to the game, running the ball. That's right. Even though we've done almost zero running the ball and has made it this far, like that Chiefs game taught me that that's not going to work. We need to have a running game. Now, Singletary at the very end of the, of the game actually went out with a possible hamstring injuries. That's something we have to keep an eye on this week. Um, TJ Yeldon barely ran. Antonio Williams is safely inactive every week. Good job. The only guy that showed any boost this season. Let's keep him on the bench. Um, but we got to mix some running in this time. We can't – they're going to jump on the play action every time with that little – oh, well, are we going to hand it off to Singletary? Of course not. We're going to throw the ball. They're going to catch on to that every time if we don't hand it off a few times. We have to mix in running with our pass game. We got to do it. So I totally agree with Jared. You need to be able to run the ball a bit and so you can set the uh, – you know, do more, more throws. All right, Dan. Now, I think a big part of Mahomes, of why he's so good, he's got a guy like Tyreek Hill who is just able to beat any corner field, it seems, for, you know, just these massive 50, 60-yard touchdowns. I think you're going to have to slow down Tyreek Hill. And I think if you can do that and just keep Mahomes in the pocket, I think that's big because, you know, he likes to roll out, and that's when, that's when he hits those long plays. All right, I will just say real quick, I think it's to stay healthy. Uh, between the Bills game and the Chiefs-Browns game, we saw what happens when one of the teams, the, the momentum shift when they lose their starting quarterback and just like, oh, my gosh. And as a Bills fan, I just want to be able to face, face our opponents with our, with our full team. So let's just stay healthy, get through the game, and be back to win the Super Bowl because we win the AFC Championship 30-27. to 27. Dan, your pick. I'm going to go with a 37 to 31 Bills. I know I picked the Ravens last week. I, I, I couldn't – I wasn't going to pick the – to lose two times in a row. There's, so, I think it's going to be a shootout. I'm hoping for a shootout. I mean, I think a lot of people were expecting a shootout last week, and it was a great defensive game. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of points in this one, in 37-31 Bills. All right. John? Yeah, I think we really have a hard time covering Travis Kelsey. We've really struggled against uh, athletic, tall tight ends all year long. Um, and so I'm going to still pick the Bills, though, 35-33. Uh, all right, Jared. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I mean, the dream has been a lovely river of love, but at this point it's, 
it's over. <laughs> no, I, that's horrible. But no, I, I have a lot of trouble seeing us win. <laughs> the expectation really was that the Bills were going to make it this far. And then the next expectation was that the Chiefs were going to go. I, I, I haven't seen anything that's going to break that yet. I'm, I wish I did, but I don't. I hope the three of you are right. I say the Chiefs win 28-21. All right. Well, either way, we'll be back to either for a season wrap-up or for a Super Bowl preview, y'all. We cannot wait. Uh, so until then, we'll see you soon. I got nothing to throw. I got nothing. Just... <laughs>